helyzetet. Thank you. It's good to be in Georgia. It's, uh, I wish it were under happier circumstances, to be honest with you. I am running for the GOP nomination for U.S. President. I'm the first millennial ever to run for president as a Republican. Thank you. <laughs> and I just have to speak honestly with all of you to say that the way I want to win this election is by convincing the people of this country to vote for me, not by having some corrupt federal government try to stop my competitor in this race from running against me. That is not America. That is not the America I learned to pledge allegiance to as a kid. We are not some banana republic where the party in power uses the police to arrest its political opponents. We are going to finally end that corrupt administrative police state in America, starting with the FBI. And I just wanted to open this speaking that truth for what it is. Thank you. I'll speak to you as a member of my generation today. Okay, you try asking somebody my age. I was born in 1985. I'm 37. <laughs> you try asking somebody my age. What does it mean to be an American today? You get a blank stare in response. It's like a deer in the headlights. <laughs> That's the vacuum at the heart of our national soul. We're in the middle of a national identity crisis. Faith, patriotism, hard work, family. These things have disappeared only to be replaced by wokeness, gender ideology, COVIDism, the climate cult. We are hungry for a cause. We're hungry for purpose and meaning and identity. We hunger to be part of something bigger than ourselves, yet we cannot even answer what it means to be an American today. I'll tell you what I see in the country. We're like a bunch of blind bats flying around in some dark cave trying to figure out where we are. You know how a bat figures out where it is? Sends out a sonar signal, bounces off the wall, it comes back, it says, this is where I am. We human beings, especially people my age, we do the same thing. We send out a signal, it bounces off of my family. The two parents, my mother and father, who brought me into this world. The children who I brought into this world with my wife. That is true. That is real. That means something to me. That bounces back. It tells me this is where I am. Send out a signal. It bounces off my belief in God. My faith is real. That is true. That means something to me. It bounces back. tells me this is where I am. Send out a signal. It bounces off of my conviction in this nation that I'm a citizen of the United States of America, not some global citizen somewhere else. I'm a citizen of this nation. That bounces back. It says, this is where I am. What happens when those things disappear? We send out these signals, and then nothing comes back. It's an old expression. They say if there's a hole the size of God in your heart and God does not fill it, something else will instead. The same can be said of belief in a nation. This is our moment in the conservative movement to rise up, to level up, to say that we're done running from something. Now it's time to start running to something. What does it mean to be an American? I'm a George Washington America First conservative. <laughs> That's what it means. <laughs> he was the OG of the America First movement. It started in 1776. We live in a 1776 moment today. To put America first 
We have to rediscover what America is. You want to know what it means to be an American? means we believe in the ideals of the American Revolution. I am an American nationalist. I will not apologize for it. means we believe in the Constitution. means we believe in the Declaration of Independence. means we believe in meritocracy, free speech, the pursuit of excellence, open debate, the rule of law in this country, that you get to come in through the front door, not the back door. That's what it means to have a border in this country. It means the people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the government, not some administrative bureaucracy that runs the show today. That is what it means to be an American. America is founded on the truth, the pursuit of truth. We will not apologize for truth. You want to talk truth today? Let's talk truth. God is real. There are two genders. Fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity. An open border is no border. Reverse racism is racism. Parents determine the education of their children. The nuclear family is the best known form of governance to mankind. Capitalism is the best system known to lift people up from poverty. There are three branches of government in the U.S., not four. <laughs> And the U.S. Constitution is the best guarantor of freedoms in human history. These are true. That is truth. And I will not apologize for it. That is what it means to be an American. We will speak truth. We will stand up. You will not stop me from speaking at every step of the way. This is the American Revolution. This is 1776 in the moment we live in today. We, the people, will not be stopped in our pursuit of the truth. Thank you. Thank you. USA. You said it. So how are we going to do it? You put me in that office, January 2033. Here's what I'm telling you. I'm getting a lot of false promises from a lot of people. Three things we get done in the next 10 years, we're in good shape. First, we have to shut down the administrative state as it exists. That is the number one objective here at home. Take a government agency that should have never existed, like the U.S. Department of Education. Okay? I'm not going to tell you I'm going to reform that beast. You can't reform the beast. You have to kill it. You have to shut it down. We're done with the Department of Education. You then go over to the one we're talking about today, the FBI. This should not exist. It was corrupt in 1960. The same education, the same FBI that threatened Martin Luther King Jr. with suicide as a corrupt body is now targeting Donald Trump and its political opponents today. We will not tame that beast. We will kill it. We will shut it down. This is what it means to be an American. Second thing I'll do, we will declare independence from our actual enemy. And no, that is not somewhere in Ukraine. That is communist China. That is the top threat that we face. That is the Declaration of Independence that Thomas Jefferson would have signed if he were alive today. That is the Declaration of Independence that I will sign, that we will sign as we head into our future. We cannot depend on an enemy for our modern way of life. If that had been a Russian spy balloon flying over half the United States, you know what we would have done? 
we'd have shot it down and ratcheted up the sanctions against Russia. You want to know why we didn't do it against China? Because we're addicted to them and we have a president in the White House who is owned by our enemy. So we got to fix that. We're addicted to the fentanyl that they're pumping across our southern border. We're addicted to the digital fentanyl that they're putting in our kids' hands in the form of TikTok. We're addicted to the financial fentanyl that they use to fund our national debt. We are done with that addiction, and I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm getting real with you. I'm not going to make a false promise. If we want to declare independence from our enemy, it's going to involve some short-run sacrifice, some short-run inconvenience. I will not speak falsehood to you. Now, you can make a sacrifice if you know what you're sacrificing for. By the way, when you're willing to make a sacrifice, that's when you don't have to make one at all. A little bit more Churchill, a little less Chamberlain in our foreign policy, okay? A little bit of a spine when you're sitting across the table from Xi Jinping. But we can make that sacrifice if we know what we're sacrificing for. And that is this thing we call America. That's the third thing I'm going to do for you, is revive civic pride in this country, where 10 years from now, we will be proud to be an American again. We have to be. Young Americans through the country today, I guess, speak some truth to you. Less than 16% of Gen Z says they are proud to be American. We have a 25% recruitment deficit in the U.S. military. Two weeks ago, 60% of young Americans in a survey said that they would sooner give up their right to vote than to give up their access to TikTok. I'm not making this up. This would be funny <laughs> if it weren't true. So whatever it is, we're going to have to think big, get beyond the identity politics that teaches us that we're to be judged on the color of our skin rather than the content of our character. That's why I'm ending affirmative action in America. We're done with it. It's a cancer on our national soul. But we got to be willing to do the hard things. I'm going to go further with you. And you know what? Everybody in here doesn't have to agree with me on this to vote for me. I'm just going to speak truth. I favor a constitutional amendment in this country that would take the voting age from 18 to 25, but still allow you to vote at age 18 if you either serve the country in the military or the police, or you pass the same civics test that every immigrant has to pass to become a voting citizen of this country. I am a nationalist, and I will not apologize for the ideals that this nation was founded on. I will not apologize for the Declaration of Independence. I will not apologize for our Constitution. I grew up into a generation where we celebrated our diversity and our differences so much that we forgot all of the ways that we are the same as Americans, bound by a common set of ideals that set this nation into motion 250 years ago. I believe it deep in my bones that those ideals still exist, but we're going to have to do the hard work of reviving them. Think about it with me. Our diversity, it's a fine thing. But if there's nothing greater that unites us across our diversity, we're just a different looking group of two-legged higher mammals with a bunch of different shades of melanin, walking some geographic space that we call a country, doing what our iPhones told us to do on a given day. That's not America. The America I know is a vision of what that place can be. Diversity is not our strength. Our strength is what unites us across our diversity. E pluribus unum, we say for a reason, from many, one.
That is the dream that won the American Revolution. That is the dream that reunited us after the Civil War. That is the dream that won us two world wars and the Cold War. That is the dream that still gives hope to the free world. And if we can revive that dream over group identity and victimhood and grievance, then nobody in the world, not a nation, not a corporation, not a virus is going to defeat us. That is what American exceptionalism is all about. And I promise you, that is what we together will revive to save this great nation. Thank you all. God bless you. God bless your families. And God bless our United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. USA. Thank you.